What we need to bridge the gap is some form of ASEAN tournament, some form of ASEAN Champions so League. Have I or have I not ASEAN been saying this? ASEAN Football Federation hurt you. Yes. Welcome to part two of the award-winning Yahoo Footballing Weekly with me, the still sunburnt and equally award-winning Neil Humphreys. <laughs> Yahoo editor Chan Kong and we have back with us, good friend, Spurs fan, Daryl. There you go, I'm take the guys. trophy. Take the trophy, guys. As always, we thank you, just to remind you, we won the diverse, vo oh, we got silver Sil in the diverse yeah. voices, voices awards yeah. category, thanks to you. So yeah. we do appreciate that. And just a final shout out for this lovely human being here. Went all the way to the US to get this trophy for us. We said enough's enough. <laughs> We're not waiting anymore. So he jumped on a plane. No expense spared. Yeah. We got our own. No, he kindly donated this trophy to the team and we appreciate it. Yep, Even really though he's a Spurs it. fan, you have no idea <laughs> how yep. hard it is to compliment this man. <laughs> but thank you. And I compliment you, as always, for helping yep. us win and mm. giving us the sponsor, yep. Starhub. Starhub. Yeah, they're back with us. Thank you very much. Okay, as you all know, Premier League broadcaster for Singapore. So Starhub will be holding a free live screening this weekend. Saturday at Capital Singapore Outdoor Plaza. Nice. So the match, uh, the early match, 7.30 kickoff mm. is Newcastle versus, versus Spurs. Spurs. Yeah, so all you Spurs fans, all you Magpie fans, please come down. Please come. Even if you are not, not those two fans, come down, have some fun. There's some free food, free fun field activities. Just come down. We will be there. Yeah. We do a sort of like a preview, like a podcast. And you know what I've just realised? Mm -hmm. You know when they brought the English Premier League trophy to Singapore okay. for selfies? Uh -huh. Well, you see where I'm going with this. Yeah, just, yes. <laughs> the trophy. I, I will we'll, bring the only we'll trophy there. that matters. Yes. We will bring the trophy. We want selfies with this trophy. <laughs> Come down. Oh, Hang Kiong will be there. Neil will be there. Yeah. And Never so mind your Premier trophy. Leagues and your Champions yeah. Leagues. Who cares about those And your FA years. Cups and your World Cups. Don't, who cares about all big years? This is the one. This is the one. This is the one. We'll okay. bring it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So come down, come down Saturday. This Saturday, yeah. Um, 13th of April. From the, the events will start about six o'clock. The kickoff is 7.30, Newcastle mm. versus Spurs. Brilliant. And because we love mm. you guys so much mm. for being so loyal, we've got more freebies. Oh, even more, more yeah. freebies. And this is for next week's Star Hub Football Festival. 20th and 21st April weekend at our Templis Hub. So, you know, this 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 will culminate in the the finale will be a uh, exhibition match between the Premier League legends and Singapore legends. Premier League legends will people like David James, Teddy Sheringham, Dwight York, Glenn Johnson, Vladimir Spitzer, Patrick Berger, also John Ray, Ray Parler is also there, is it? Ray Parler, I think so, but we'll see. Um, and the Singapore legends, mm. uh, good old Durek will be there, oh. Mayaki Kaizan, we have... Uh, Nasri Nasir, we have uh, Indra Shadan, mm. Heidi Iskandar. Yep. Yep. Household names. Legends. Yep. So come down uh, uh, and enjoy an evening, fun, fun field football evening. And if you want, you can count, go to this website. This is a Google form website. Enter our contest giveaway uh, where we give you, we will be giving away five pairs of tickets to that exhibition match. So all you have to do is to answer the question. Which English Premier League football legend are you looking forward most to seeing at the Star Hub Football Festival and why? That's it. Yep. And I will give you an example by using the Singapore legends. Mm. I want to see by Haki Kaizan mm. because he's a good guy and he came on our podcast. Yeah. What about I you? I also want to see Durick because he's a good guy. Also came to our podcast. <laughs> We're just plugging ourselves <laughs> now. Plugging okay. ourselves. You, who do you want to I see? I want to see Durick. Because? Uh. His contributions. He's oh, don't forget. Goals, he's not going to win tickets he's for that. He's among the top 10 footballers in the whole whole wide world. Did you know this? Who have scored the most hat tricks since oh. 2000. Ahead of his boy, right? Harry Kane. Harry Kane. Harry Kane. Yeah. I think See, he's ahead of Ronaldo. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Ronaldo is first. Durek, Messi, Messi, Messi second. Durich is ninth. Ninth. And yes. Kane was 10th. Yes. There you go. There you go. Coming ahead through. of Harry Kane, he'll be here <laughs> at the Festival of Football. Yep. So go go on to down to the website. Uh, take part in the contest. Deadline is this Friday, twelfth of April. Right. Oof. And from the legends 
to the young acorns. See what I did there? Hey. Coming through the game. The yes. Singapore Youth League week on week continues to get lots Future. of comments from yep, our yep. viewers. Gets a lot of comments. I think people are excited about the league, but also concerned that there are some teething problems. Mm. For example, this this guy, Ray Go 3738 mm. He said, with regard to the Singapore Youth League, mm-hmm. it's ironic that you talk about hearing from the ground when you have not actually heard from the ground. Oh, really? <laughs> the, the SYL, the NDC, which is the National Development Centre, and the NSG, which is the National School Games, have not coordinated their efforts and are getting in one another's way. How is it that the NDC players are required to train four times a week but have no competition to take part in? yet are expected to play for a club in the SYL and many also play in the NSG. How, the, how does it help a young footballer when he's training and playing so often while being torn in different directions? What about his studies, his family ties his, and his social life? The various people in charge of each competition should put their egos aside, put the interests of the kids first and sit down to ensure coherence and synergy to best develop the young footballers. Wow. A good comment. It's a very, good comment. Very, very good comment. I think, I Thank think, you. It, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, and I think it's necessary, yes. I mean, with this new Singapore Youth League, it's a year-long league and you have to play at least 30 games. Uh, they, they, they offer 30 games for each of the academies. Mm. So there's a lot of chances to play, but you also shouldn't overplay uh, a young player who is still developing. Yep. And then, you, as, as, he, as he mentions, that he is might be involved in the National Development Centre. He might have his own school games to think about. So there's actually a lot of games for him. And and I do believe that uh, some there's some compromise should be made. You shouldn't force the player say, oh, you must play in every, every single league game. You must play in every single school games. I think that would be excessive and detrimental. But I also think that you should not discount the Singapore Youth League completely. Correct. It's a great initiative to you know, at least make make the 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 baseline of the Singapore youth have have some opportunity to continue to keep playing, uh, have some opportunities, and so and so I think don't discount it. I think that is this is just teething problems, which I'm sure the the authorities will try to eventually manage yeah. and then eventually get get it right. Could not Mm. agree more, Mm. my friend. Mm. Could not agree more. Mm. Look, you said it perfectly well. The Singapore Youth League will have teething problems Mm. and there will be competing interests, Mm. right? If you've got a half-decent footballer, Mm. his school side will want him, his existing Singapore Premier League club will want him, and now the Singapore Youth League may also want him. So he may have three competing forces all pulling in different directions. Mm. That requires the stakeholders to get together, throw out the egos, and prioritise what's best for the collective and what's best for him. Now, to simplify, growing up in the UK, this happens a lot. A kid gets too good for his school. He yeah. gets too good for his school. So the school has to say, we'd love to have him because he scores 27 goals a week. <laughs> but he's now playing for Tottenham. He's a young Harry Kane. Yeah. And Tottenham's priorities are bigger than the school's. These are the conversations, difficult conversations, that the stakeholders need to have. Absolutely. Now, he may go to some Atta school, some Haolien school, but if he's got a potential of one day playing for Singapore, then whatever he needs to do to end up playing for Singapore has to be prioritised. What do you think? I think it's also down to the parents to make the decision. Uh, Like what you all have mentioned, so there will be a lot of interest in like the good players, like the really star players. Mm. But what we want is we want to have a lot of uh, boys and girls playing yes. playing the sport, right? So if um, you start out and, and then you join like maybe the Barcelona like youth mm. set up here and then they play in the Singapore Youth League, mm. maybe you just go that route. Mm. And then if you're being picked by Barcelona to play in the Singapore Youth League, then in a way, you know, just don't bother playing for your school mm. because uh, just give the opportunity to someone else and then you just focus uh, in that way. Yeah. I think, and this also comes down to, yeah, you can say maybe the coach make the decision but ultimately it's the parents in yeah. consultation don't, don't be that, that makes the decision yeah, yes. and then, um, like the comment here mentioned about uh, what about his family ties uh, what about his studies so again it comes down to the parents to structure and say like okay uh, boy and girl you, you have a potential mm. you may have a future in this let's find the best way and if we decide like maybe if like Barcelona or Lisbon or the Real Madrid like outfit is good then you join and then you follow their program 
you know, we just cut out the schools like football team, mm. uh, and, and and then the other time just focus on your schools and your studies. Ah, like this is basic. Like this is what my parents told me. I listen half the time. Correct. But this is what it is, right? Like. But and this is where this is where Kiasu parents may hate me. You know what I'm going to say when I saw you. they love you. No, man. when I saw that part, what about his studies, his family ties, and his social life? If that is a young footballer's priorities, give it up. Yeah, yeah. you're totally not going to make it. You're not going to make it. Don't yeah. waste everybody's time. Just focus on your studies. Stop yeah. playing football. If your priorities as a 14, 15, 16 year old footballer really are family, uh, what was the other thing? Social life and studies. Social you life. are not yeah. going to make it as a so footballer. So we have addressed, we have addressed the elephant in the room. The elephant yeah. is on its way out now. <laughs> yes, whatever it is. <laughs> yes. But because the other point is, I always think of Gary Neville. Gary Neville, oh. okay, extreme example. He cut every friend out of his life. Ah. Every school friend, he made a conscious decision at 15, I'm not mixing with these guys yep. anymore. I am 100% Manchester United youth team and mm. nothing else. No family, no social life, yeah. no friends, nothing. I got one shot yeah. to make it as a professional footballer or I don't make it. Unless you've got that kind of mindset. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah. It's all and or nothing, right? I mean, even then, like, Man United became his family. Like, like Fergie was his like, adopted dad who would take care of yeah. him. His teammates yeah. became, yep. like, his close friends, Beckham, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nicky Bard, and, and Scholes and everyone. Correct. So, like, that's but how it is, He has right? to that's take how... the first step, yeah. you know? And you have to take and, a risk. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And just to add to that, I know people listening and watching will say, ah, oh, but not everyone's Gary Neville. Yeah. Fine. That's what the Singapore Youth League is for. <laughs> it's to capture those who are not quite good enough at the very apex to sustain their career. That's what the Youth League is for. That's why the stakeholders get together. This kid is school level. Yeah. This kid is maybe potential national level. Yeah. So adjust. Yeah. Right? I mean, they're, they're tweaking. Yeah. Yeah, they're tweaking it. So give them a chance. Give them a chance. But a so great comment, right? Great comment, Thank though. you very much mm. indeed. What's the next one? Frankie. Yeah. Frankie. So, you know, we've been talking about coach... Tsutomu Ogura's and uh, starting f few games and then, you know, we were saying it's a good start and then, you know, this is a clear example of how a, a decent start, it's not even, they didn't have even won yet. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, the people are already getting excited. So, so this Frankie Go 84 says, with all respects to the Fundy, when I saw the Singapore versus Chinese China lineup, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, he dropped Irfan. And then when Ogura brought off Iksan, I was like, wow, when was the last time we played without any of the fan fundies when they are, they are available? Another thing that wow me about the first match lineup is that we had wing backs and defensive midfielders packing the whole team, but trying to play attacking football with them. Maybe it's in the Japanese DNA, but when I saw Anu Mantan pressing all the way into the Chinese, Chinese penalty box, I knew he had a... I kind of knew that he had a Dyson Maida type of role in the team. So in case you don't know Dyson Maida, he's a Celtics oh. Japanese midfield Japanese national midfielder okay. who plays for the Celtic. If you play, if you see him play, he's a he's a ball guy with a mustache, and he will run his life off in the first half just to chase and harass every every defender during the first half. And you no, know, usually he he will run out of steam in the second half, and the, the Japanese <laughs> coach will like national coach will, yeah will, will, will substitute him out. Okay, so but they want they, this this he sees this kind of mm. players, uh, so and in the second half, Ogura was like unleashing the raw, if you like, slowly introducing his more offensive players with Faris Ramli and Song Wei Yong could have won the game, but ultimately a very inspiring performance and result. I mean, this just shows that you know. How did what, what what big a difference this new coach is from the previous one? Correct. The 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 previous one Nishigaya, no decent man. I I I mean I, I don't say he's has any bad bone in him, but he, I mean he's definitely overmatched. First three matches, I was looking at his record, lost his first three matches, and it's not against some and it's not against I tough teams. It's gonna be like Kyrgyzstan and and uh, I think. Some some barring or whatever, and and none of the none of them were playing well, and then every they couldn't get the fans behind them from day one, and and you know the whole tenure two years tenure poor guy didn't have the 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 support of the fans behind him, but this guy immediately has the fans yes 
inspired and you know rooting for the team and that that is a great step forward couldn't agree more mm. I'll deal with the first point mm. first mm. The, the there is an elephant in the room the founding name elephant. there's elephant. a lot of elephants this week my friend <laughs> because I know a lot of people have been sort of tiptoeing around this so mm. let's be quite blunt mm. when it comes to the founders. I will never criticize them. Mm. The whole family plays. Yeah. If we had 100, 200 families like the Fandi family, Singapore good. would be way yeah. up there. Mm. But in this particular game, they were better when Iksan Fandi went off. Yeah. They were. He lacked a little bit of mobility. It's a battering ram. Yeah. Yes, mm. in that particular game. Mm. That's not to say his kind of skills. He's a kind of a Nunez, Andy Carroll type of player. His type of skills will be more suited in other fixtures. Yeah. Yeah. What we should do is see the positive that a coach, new coach, came in, wasn't interested in names or personalities or reputations. This player on the bench may help me better than this player on the pitch. That's all he saw. So he brought on Faris Rumley, completely changed yep. the game. Yep. Faster, quicker, more nimble. The whole dynamic of Singapore changed. That's the positive to take from this, that Ogura is willing to improvise, make changes for the greater good. Mm. The Farnies will be fine. Yeah. Yeah. They'll play in lots of other games. Well, they'll adapt, yeah. The key is Ogura looks like a real good coach. Yeah. And when was the last time Singapore could say that? <sighs> long, long time ago. See, a long time. Ready, right? Ready, Ready. Maybe. Ready. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so so great great comment. I think I think uh, it also. I mean, for me, more it feels like the excitement is is back. People yes. are really talking yeah. about it. Have we got our lions back? Yeah, I mean, I mean, ho hopefully, hopefully when, when yeah, the, hopefully, hopefully. the Mitsubishi Electric Cup yeah. comes back, we can see the same thing. We'll see how. Yes, but we will not see next season. Tenga FC. Yeah. They will not be joining us in the upcoming Singapore Premier League, which kicks off next month. Yep. Uh, it didn't get approved. Yeah. Mm. So so the, the news was announced last week, and we sort of guessed it. Yes. There was a, we heard that there was a uh, in principle approval about some sometime in I think February, end of February. That or we heard that okay, Tenga FC have have got, got in principle approval, but then then but they still need to prove that you know you have your sponsors in, you have every yeah. of finances. Basic correctly. due diligence. Yeah, due diligence. So that that took a long time. And, and we, we were wondering we, that we got a clue, didn't we? Because yeah. we've got someone from Tenga FC, and now yes. we don't. Yeah. We've got yeah. someone from Tenga <laughs> FC, to come? and now yeah, we don't. Do, do, it was almost uh, like yeah. every week someone's yeah. coming, yeah. and now they're not. Yeah. So so. It, so eventually, what happened was that FAS announced last week that um, because the due diligence took longer than expected, uh, and the team, I mean, it's, you get the the season starts on in May, early May, and you know it's just too 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 small of a window for them to get ready, assemble a, a strong enough yeah. side, and then start the season in the right way. So the advice is for the the team to sit out this this season but get ready for the next season, which is, I think it makes perfect sense. Correct. But however, Sydney Gronk's 8467 says, well, first he says, great show and footballing analysis are always, thank you. Hey, don't, 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 don't rush over that part. Great show and footballing analysis as always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So what's your view on the Tengas withdrawal? I was a bit heartbroken for the local game. <coughs> is this FAS's fault for the lack of a runway? Or should Tenga have managed their approach to their entrance into the Singapore Premier League better, given that the club knew what they were getting themselves into when they aimed to join the league? I don't want to sound pessimistic, but we can't find a cash cow that will start a few new clubs in the Singapore Premier League and sign Mbappe, Haaland or Kane for return of their investments. Do we need more funding from the government for this? I would like more funding for the grassroots football, but that's discussion for another day. First of all, I don't think it's a bad thing for them to sit out the league. I agree. You really have to get your areas together. Correct. Get get your finances proper before you set off on your Singapore Premier League adventure. 100%. Right? Yeah. And you know, it makes no sense to just parachute a club in. They get beaten left, right, center like the Young Lions. And you know, and then people are asking you, why do you even want a new team? Yeah, you need a new team so that it can be more competitive and and no no pressure on Tenga. They really have to get it correct before before anything before you know they can they can really start start the season in the league. So that's one. And then you know the the thing about having more government funding from government. 
I mean, we, we should move past that really. Yes. I, I think the Lion City Sailors way, it should be the way to go. Privatization. Find find somebody who's so passionate in football like uh, Forrest Lee to you no know, set up this team. You know, now they are getting successful. They are, they are going to play in a lot of fo- football competition. They'll be winning uh, cups. And you know, that that should be the the the, the format which we'll be aiming for and not keep on relying on government funding again. Gov- the government funding, I think, is used for better things, more more on our livelihood for, or whatever. But uh, for, to, to support football clubs, to prop them up, that would be the worst thing is to use funding to prop up the clubs. No. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. What do you think, Daryl? I think definitely Tengah could have handled it better. I think they were very excited to get the news out there. To Over the excited. Drama. Very yeah. excited. Yep. But you know, when you do this, you have to back it up. You have to make sure that you have your finances yep, yep, in yep. order. Like Absolutely. what you said. Absolutely. Uh, the sponsors lined up or you're ready to go. So I, I still think like we, we should have looked at like the National Football League. Are there clubs there that we can grow and get them ready? But, so but that's them- where Tenga came from. Yeah. But And so, they were really, really keen. But the mm. thing is that so that's good. You really need to get your finances yeah. proper. La. I think yeah. I think no 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 two words about it. You, yeah. you cannot start the first season, then suddenly second yeah. season you got no more money, but, you run out of money, then it's a bad yeah. thing. So yeah. hopefully, so hopefully, like, you know, we give them another year, mm. they can get everything in order. It's a bit like the Tengah estate itself, you know? <laughs> uh, they wanted to launch it and then like have the the air condition that's part of the entire Ooh. block. Ooh. Um, you know, <laughs> but in the end they couldn't deliver. There's yeah. like condensation issues. You know, hey, hey, the best is yet to be. Okay, yeah, the yeah. best is yet to be. Yeah. Don't so forget, you, know, you, yeah, you never get buffed in a club. The best, the best is yet to be. The best is yet to be. Yeah, yeah, same like. Never mind Tanger FC. The best is yet to be. Don't worry. Yeah, but look, best. on this one, I agree with both of you. This is a situation where. Both sides can be correct. Hmm. There's nothing wrong with Tenga FC putting in an application, hmm. the more the merrier. Yeah. But on this one, the FAS did the right thing. Yeah, I know yeah, it's easy to right tech thing. on the FAS, but it's not about Tenga FC. It's about our previous track record. Hmm. How many times over the years have we had our fingers burned, and I'm going to say it, with right dodgy clubs? Sporting Africa. Sinchi FC. <laughs> Sinchi Liao, was rubbish. Liao, 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 Liao Ning. Liao Etoua Ning. FC. Hey, Etoua Liao decent. Etoua decent. Liao Ning's match fixing issues, corruption, care long issues. And I want to stress, none of this applies to Tenga FC. Nope, I just want nope. to say that for the record. Mm. None of it applies to Tenga FC. This is not a reflection of them. Yeah. This is a reflection of Singapore's history. We have had our fingers burned too many times oh when it comes to clubs coming in and the checks were not done properly. So kudos for FAS yeah. for saying, thanks for trying. We weren't entirely satisfied in time. Come back next year. Yeah. What's the issue? Yeah, what's the issue? Take your time. I have no yeah. issues. But do you agree, disagree? Let us know. Send comments too. Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube. Yahoo SG. Yahoo underscore MY on X. And Yahoo SEA on TikTok. And finally, yeah. I want to stress that this next and final story is all thanks to me. I have been saying on this show for two seasons, you can check (laughs) that what we need to bridge the gap is some form of ASEAN tournament, some form of ASEAN Champions League. Have I or have I not been saying this? ASEAN Football Federation hurt you. Yes. Yes. And Shopee, is Shopee Forest Lee? Yep. Yep. Right, Mr. Lee. (laughs) You owe me money. <laughs> oh! All money, pay money. Right. Yes. The Shopee Cup, oh, the Neil Humphreys I'm Cup. Not cheat. Call it what you like. I've been saying for two years, if we want to bridge the gap, gap ASEAN Football League. Yep. So I was at the launch of this thing at mm. uh, Raffles Hotel Singapore. You're welcome. Yep. So the ASEAN Football Federation announced that they're going to hold a, a new competition, club competition this season. It will, it will run the whole season like uh from with with all the Singapore and the Malaysia the leagues mm. from May to next May. Okay. And it will feature the top 14 clubs around the region. Um two 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 mm. clubs from Malaysia, Thailand, uh Indonesia and Vietnam, one club each from Singapore and Philippines and then Correct. one club each from Brunei, Laos, Cambodia? Uh, Cambodia. Mm. And one more was the, the other team. Next Laos, to, Laos. Mm. Which is exactly the format I said on which this exactly podcast. The format, exactly So, so the it's, format. it's a new competition. So, so well done. Uh, it's, it will be named the Shopee Cup. No. So, so it will be sponsored by Shopee. So, so it's going to be a new competition. Fair enough. I think it's a great 
uh, initiative on paper, but I, I feel I feel that I'm not I'm not sure how they're gonna work out the scheduling with all the other top events coming up. A question mark. So for example, Singapore will send most likely send Lion City sailors into this competition. Okay. So they so for that next season they will have the Singapore Premier League season. Yes. One that will be that will be like four rounds which is thirty over games. The Singapore Cup competition. Yes. Okay. There will be another five or six games. The Asian football AFC, AFC Champions League yeah, Champions two, League. which is the official game for the whole Asian mm. clubs. That is a third competition. That will take another another long time competition. And now you have a fourth competition, the ASEAN, the the Shopee Cup in the Shopee Shop. ASEAN Cup. Do you want Le- Lion City Sailors <laughs> to be Liverpool gunning for the quadruple? But, Do they have the resources to gun for the quadruple? I'm playing my violin for the Lion City Sailors. Uh, <laughs> if you want to win a trophy, you've got to take part in the trophies. You sounded like Manchester City. The no. better you are, the more competitions no. you're going to be a part of. They True. also have the biggest squad. True. They also have the True, most resources. But, but I feel that this competition doesn't offer anything else rather than other than saying that, oh, you are the top club of ASEAN. You know, at least if you say, okay, if you are the top club of ASEAN, you get into the Club World Cup. Correct. That that then they will say, okay, uh, maybe maybe we can. That e- there's a everything case. you've said, uh, I agree with yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah. But I'm also completely cynical. How many times taxi drivers, people on the street, I just come back from Tottenham, and the journalists are saying, oh, Malaysia Cup, Malaysia Cup, Malaysia Cup. I'm fed up <laughs> hearing about the Malaysia Cup, but that's what we do here in Singapore. That the earth. If you've got a spicy game with the Fandi boys at Bangkok against Lion City Sailors and you've got JDT in there, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's going to get some interest. Incidentally, so JDT have set out of this. They've set out. Yes. Forget <laughs> JDT. They're not in it. Okay, something Eddie. else. Eddie. 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 No, no, no. Eddie. But who else Eddie. is going to be in it? Who else is going to be in it from Malaysia? I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll get the second place team. Right. Yeah. Mm. So top side in Malaysia, not JDT. Yeah. And then uh, I'm assuming Bangkok is in there. Pak is yeah, in Patum. there. Yeah. Is that a bad thing? I agree with you. If mm. this was Europe and it was a European type Super League, I would be completely against it. Mm. But at this stage, anything that might just attract the slither of fan interest, mm. I'm okay. If it fails... It fails. Okay. But at least with Shopee Cup, I'm assuming there's money involved. Yeah. Okay. This is okay. Ball, I mean, I'm willing, I'm willing to have it, give it a go. But mm. I think, I think that I, I see some issues, especially in scheduling. But I'm willing to give it a go and see what happens. If it takes off, it takes off. Happy. I'm happy for it. It was just because it was my idea. Yeah. It's just, it's <laughs> That's <what> really <laughs> upset him. It was my idea. Oh, really? What do you think? I think, yeah, you mentioned like this is a new tournament and then like the clubs taking part, it will be, a you know, at least a fourth competition that they will take part in. But I think if your Lion City sailors and then you look at your schedule and then you will think, okay, the Singapore Premier League, that's a priority. Uh, the AFC Champions League, that's another priority. Maybe this one, the Shopee Cup, is the third priority. And the Singapore Cup is, you know, the last, last of those priorities yeah. because mm. how, how are we going to manage uh, yeah, so many right. games? So, interesting Let's see, you know, who who turns out, yeah. how's the engagement like. I mean, I'm not yeah. I'm not overly want, keen I'm, on the name, if I'm being honest. I know yeah. that might be if people shout I want, I want Ronaldo spots. doing the Shopee ad. Yeah, well, you might get Ronaldo. Shopee. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe Ronaldo will present the trophy. Yeah, if yeah, Undertaker he's, he's playing can... playing in Asia right now. Yeah, yeah, if Undertaker can present at like in Saudi, yeah. Ronaldo can come down to Singapore. Just Peter Lim will make the call and that's it. Exactly. But what do you guys think? The Shopee Cup, are you with it? Or against it. You're either with us or against us on this podcast. Yeah. Now, what do you think? Send he, your comments to. He, he set up the idea. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. It's the Neil, Neil Humphreys patented yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shopee Cup. So send it to Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo yeah. underscore MY on X, and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Thanks as always, Daryl. It's been and, great, guys. And thanks to all you for your regular comments. It means, as always, we have a sponsor in Starhub. So catch us at the uh, Starhub live screening at Capital Singapore Outdoor Plaza this Saturday from 6pm onwards. We will be bringing the world's best trophy for selfies. (laughs) (laughs) See you there. (laughs) See you there.